Q3D is Afni's conversion tool. It allows you to convert data that's raw right off the MRI scanner and convert it into a brick header format that AFNI can read. So first of all, let me show you the folder that I'm in. Here we have the raw DICOM files off of a semen scanner that have been dumped into here without any conversion or any alteration at all. These are straight from the scanner. And notice also that we have several different runs here and they're indexed by this middle column right here. So this is run number six. For example, this is run number five. Uh, this is run number seven. Now in this experiment, the first four runs were setup runs. And then we had two functional runs, which are five and six, and then an anatomical scan, which is run number seven. So for right now, let's convert run number five into an AFNI data set and run number seven into an AFNI anatomical data set. Also notice that this last column right here is each volume. And for each functional run, there was 165 volumes. So if I scroll up here, you see that when run five ends, it's at 165 TRs or volumes. All right, so to convert run number five, we use 2,3D. This is similar to MRI cron or SPM's DICOM import, if you've used those tools. And 2,3D needs a few different arguments. The first one is the prefix, or what do you want to call this output data set? For now, let's call it R01 for run one. 2,3D also needs this dash time argument. And this colon ZT means that it was acquired first in the Z direction and then in time. And this time argument requires four sub arguments. Okay? It needs the number of slices, which I know from my scanner notes is 35 slices in the Z direction. It needs the total number of time points for that run, which is 165 like we just talked about. It needs the repetition time in milliseconds. And here again, I also know from my scanner notes that it is 2000 milliseconds for each repetition time. In other words, how long did it take to acquire an entire volume? And lastly, this time argument needs how were these slices acquired? Okay, there are different methods of acquiring slices. One of the most popular is alternated or interleaved slices. Okay, so in other words, we have, say, 35 slices in the Z direction. And the scanner will first acquire, let's say, all of the odd slices. So 1, 3, 7, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, all the way up until 35. Then it goes back and it acquires all of the, all of the even numbered slices. So 2, 4, 6, and so on. The syntax for this is alt for alternating plus z. In other words, alternating in the z direction. The last input that 2,3D needs is the input. So all of these different DICOM files. Now instead of listing them all separately, we can use Unix's wildcards. So this wildcard will grab one or more characters and then we only want those DICOM images unique to run five. So here I'm going to type five zeros and then a five underscore another asterisk to grab one or more other characters and then dot DCM. So think about these wildcards as being a kind of filler and they can be anything, but it's only going to grab those files which contain this pattern, which is unique to run number five. Okay. I'll go ahead, hit enter. And as you can see, it does the conversion in a very quick amount of time. Now, first thing we should do is open up this R01 plus a rig data set to see whether it did an okay job. So first of all, it looks like a normal functional data set. It's a little bit blurry. And if we click on this graph, we can see the time series data, which also looks 
pretty normal. Okay. And it's also a very good habit to select one of the voxels at the very edge of the brain. So some spot where it might be susceptible to head motion, for example. And then to click in this graph pane and press the V key to enable video mode. So any of these spikes, if you see any very sudden spikes, that could be due to head movement. And by enabling video mode, you can look in this pane and see whether any of these spikes correspond to any sudden head motion. Now, if that happens, you might want to censor those time points when you construct your model at a later stage. But so far, this one looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop that and exit out of AFNI. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, the exact same logic, but to convert the anatomical data set, which requires fewer arguments and is more straightforward. All it requires is the command 23D and a dash anat flag, which specifies that this converted data set is an anatomical data set. You can also have a prefix, which can be anat for the anatomical. And again, we're going to use these wildcards to only grab run number seven, which if you recall, I mentioned before was the anatomical run. So five zeros and underscore, another asterisk, and then dot DCM. Okay, so it's already done. It's already converted that. And again, we should go ahead and open that up in AFNI to see whether there are any abnormalities or if 23D failed. Okay, so this is something I do with every subject. After I, immediately after I convert their data, I go into this and enlarge the field of view a little bit and enable video mode by clicking in this pane and pressing V. Now this is very important in case there are any artifacts that you didn't pick up on while you were scanning. Sometimes you'll see things that may appear very bright or perhaps very dark, and those are things that you should be aware of because they could potentially be artifacts or they could potentially be life-threatening um, injuries or insults. All right, so as you can see, it only takes a few seconds to go through somebody's anatomical data set, but it's really a critical step just to, first of all, make sure that your data looks good and reasonable, and also to see whether there are any abnormalities that you might want to flag.